Fibroids, a very common tumor of the uterus. One in five women in the general population will have fibroids. And it is three times more common in women of Afro-Caribbean origin. But do they stop you from getting pregnant? What is the treatment? I'm Dr. Anupanandi, consultant gynecologist and fertility specialist from London. Let's find out more about fibroids and how do we treat them. Fibroids are tumors of the wall of the uterus formed by overgrowth of the muscle cells. They are benign tumors. They can vary widely in their number, size and location. When they remain only in the wall of the uterus, they are called intramural fibroids. Sometimes they push inwards towards the cavity of the uterus and that is called submucous fibroid. They can push and come completely inside the cavity, called intracavitary fibroids. Sometimes they push outwards towards the surface of the uterus and is called subserosal fibroids. They can be attached to the uterus or stalk, called pedunculated fibroid. Fibroids grow under the influence of estrogen and after menopause, they usually shrink in size. Symptoms from fibroid depends mainly on its location. Some women can have no symptoms at all and you find fibroids when undertaking an ultrasound scan for some other reason. The symptoms are mainly heavy period. Periods can sometimes be painful as well. The heavy period can cause anemia. Those with large fibroids, they can have pain in the abdomen, backache or abdominal swelling. They can have urinary frequency due to pressure of the fibroid on the bladder, constipation due to pressure of the fibroid on the bowels, and also swelling of the kidney or the ureter due to fibroids pressing on them. Most women with fibroids can conceive naturally and are not infertile. However, based on the location of the fibroid, they can cause infertility. The submucous and the intracavitary fibroid are mainly associated with infertility. The intramural fibroids can cause infertility if they cause distortion of the cavity. The subserosal fibroids are rarely associated with infertility. How fibroid causes infertility is not very clear. It could be by blocking the cervix, and thereby interfering with the sperm entering into the cavity or blocking the tubes. By distorting the cavity, it can interfere with the movement of the sperm or the embryos. By mere its presence in the cavity, it can interfere with the embryo implanting. It can alter the blood flow to the endometrium and that can interfere with the development of the endometrium and embryo implantation and also cause early miscarriage. If you have fibroid, it's very important to ensure that the fibroid is not coming into the cavity or distorting the cavity. This can be done by transvaginal ultrasound scan or saline infusion sonography, which involves inserting some saline at the same time of performing some transvaginal ultrasound scan. It gives a better view of the cavity. And if it's even better, if 3D scan is combined with the saline infusion sonography. The other way to assess cavity is using hysteroscopy, which involves direct visualization of the uterine cavity. It can be done with or without general anesthetics. MRI is also a very accurate way to assess the fibroids and it's especially helpful when you have got multiple fibroids. If you have been investigated, and no obvious cause for infertility has been found, then you have every chance of falling pregnant naturally, even if you have got fibroids. Whether you need treatment depends on how many fibroids you have, what are their locations, and what symptoms you have. Management of fibroid has to be decided as case-by-case -case basis. If you have a small fibroid, 
which is not distorting the cavity and not giving you any symptoms, then it does not necessarily need any treatment. If you have a submucosal or intracavitary fibroid, then removal of that fibroid might increase your chance of getting pregnant. If it is a small fibroid less than 5 cm, it can be removed by hysteroscopy. If you have big or fibroid or multiple fibroids, which are giving you symptoms like pressure symptoms or heavy bleeding, then you might be advised to remove them by surgery, which can be done laparoscopically or by open surgery. During the surgery, surgeon will try to remove the fibroid only from the uterus. Fibroid surgery can be associated with complications like bleeding, scarring inside the uterus, or in worse scenario, to save your life, the surgeon might have to remove your uterus if the bleeding is excessive. So the decision for surgery, just to improve your fertility, should be taken very carefully after balancing the risks and benefits from the surgery. It is usually recommended that you wait for three to six months after the fibroid surgery before you start trying for pregnancy again. This will allow time for the uterine wall to heal from the surgery. The medicines that are used to treat heavy periods from fibroids are mainly hormonal pills, injections and coils. Since they are contraceptive in nature, they cannot be used when you are trying to conceive. Esmia was one of the drugs that was initially used to shrink the fibroids, but recently it has been banned in UK because of serious liver injury. Uterine artery embolization, or also called uterine fibroid embolization, is another method to treat fibroids. The idea is to block the arteries feeding the fibroid by injecting some embolic agents under X-ray guidance. As the blood supply to the fibroid is cut off, it gradually degenerates and shrinks in size. However, there is risk of damage to the arteries supplying the ovary and the lining of the uterus, which can cause infertility, early miscarriage and the increased need for caesarean section. And hence, uterine artery embolization is not recommended to treat fibroid in women who are trying to conceive, although there has been some reports of successful pregnancy after uterine artery embolization. Another treatment option is MRI-guided focused ultrasound treatment. The idea of this treatment is to use ultrasound beam to increase the temperature, heat up and destroy the fibroids under MRI guidance. This is a very new technique, it's not available everywhere and more research is needed to know the safety of this procedure in women trying to conceive. Having fibroid doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have fertility treatment. The decision to have fertility treatment depends on the results of your fertility investigation, your age, and how long you have been trying to conceive. Most women with fibroid will have a healthy, uneventful pregnancy and have a normal delivery. But complications can be there in some pregnancies. There is increased risk of miscarriage, preterm labor. Sometimes the fibroids can increase in size during pregnancy and become very painful. And that is usually managed conservatively with pain relief, rest and hydration. There is increased risk of placental abruption when the placenta separates from the wall of the uterus causing bleeding during pregnancy. There is increased need for caesarean section more so in women who had myomectomy in past because that can weaken the wall of the uterus. Women with fibroid can have increased risk of bleeding after delivery. So to summarize, fibroids are benign tumor of the wall of the uterus. Some women with fibroids have no symptoms at all. The main symptoms are heavy bleeding, anemia, pressure symptoms, abdominal discomfort. Most women with fibroids are not infertile and will conceive naturally. Those with submucous or intracavitary fibroid 
it can have infertility and removing submucus and intracavitary fibroid can improve their chances of getting pregnant naturally. Subserosal or intramural fibroids are only removed if they are causing cavity distortion or pressure symptoms. Majority of the women with fibroid have a normal healthy pregnancy and normal delivery. Complications can happen in some. Thank you for listening. I hope it was useful. If you have any questions about fibroid, please put it down in the comment box. Thank you.